Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Today we're working on Anatomy of a Mix number three. The song is I Remember by Drive By Angels. This is part number seven, our electric guitars, or the first half of our electric guitars for this mix. We're gonna cover all the details of what we do, how we process them, how we blend them with the keyboards and the track. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please give us a thumbs up and like and subscribe to the channel. We could really use your support. Leave your comments below. I'll try to get back to each and every one of you. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so I can let you know when more videos like this are available. Thanks again, enjoy. Let's start looking at these guitars. We have quite a few. So our first set, I'm gonna send to one of our guitar auxes. We'll just send it to one for now. I'm not really sure what's happening on that one. So this is kind of dark, this tune right in here. I saw these kind of feel a little lifeless to me. So I'm gonna work on this one and, uh, and try to see what we can do with it. Let's try to copy that over to the other one and see what it all sounds like together. It sounds thin soloed, but that's totally fine. So on these main electric guitars, it's just a football, you know, whole note strum. And the interesting thing, it took me a minute to get this together. So the first thing I did was scoop out some low end. Then I tried to get this guy going a little bit to give it a little upper mids above where the electric piano and the pad were and compress it to even it out a little. Then it still wasn't really making it. And I went up to my aux subs and I have my usual 
suspects on here, and none of them really worked. I have this uh, SPL for spreading, and, and none of these guys work, but this, this Billy Decker guitar plug-in worked great. So let's pop that in and out and hear the guitar. So this will be out first. Now in. So let's check them solo because that was so nice. Out. In. So I'll pop that in and out while we listen to the keyboards. This will be out first. And I'll pop it in. So what's great about that is it, it, it made it speak through the whole mix. Sometimes one tool like that, if you have it, you pop it in, it makes the whole job easy. That's why they're always there, ready to go in the template. So the next set of guitars I see that's happening in the second, in the chorus here, is labeled picking guitar. So let's assign those to an output bus, and we'll go EG2, we'll pan them left and right. And we'll see what they sound like. Okay, so all we have so far on this Aux Master is this particular Phoenix tape emulator. So on this guitar, I'm popping in some ambience, which is this guitar room. And I don't know if it's a big enough sound. Let's try it. So let's check this blend out. And this is real proof of how the equalizer affects the levels. So by far the brightest things are the acoustic piano, which should be the most in the forefront. And that's pretty low. Then we have the treated electric piano, which is dark and mid-rangey. And then we have the soft pad, which is upper mid-rangey. Then this is the, the guitar that's strumming, which is pretty bright, and this is the new picking guitar, which is pretty dark. So let's check those out in context. I'll pop them in and out. Those are the bright elements. Dark and mid-range elements. Let's hear them all in context. So 
So when you listen to it that way, the, the low guitar seems to have way too much low end, so it feels like it interferes with things for me. So let's check that out, move them to the front so we know where they are. So this guy right here needs some, some help in the low end. So let's see what we have going on. So you'll notice right here when I put this, you know, 2K, I cranked it up 3, 4 dB. All of a sudden it kind of spoke out in the mix. And I had to, I had to lose quite a bit of low end here on it. Let's try it one more time. Now I'll shut the SSL off. In. So I see that the sidechain B, which is my Neve compressor, which pushes everything further out, is where the strumming guitar is going. So, and then we also have the guitar sidechain. So let's set these both to zero and pop them in and out and see what happens, how we like either combination on either of these. So it didn't make that much of a difference. Now the sidechain B is the Neve, which is where the keyboards are going, and the guitar sidechain is LA-3A. So it felt like to me when I put them in the LA-3A and not the Neve, it gave them a little more distinction and it kind of moved different. Sidechain C is a pair of 1176s from some mid-range bite that I didn't think it needed. So let's check that section one more time and we'll go back and mess with some levels. So listening back, I felt like the picking guitar needed some more movement or ambience around it. So let's check out putting some delay on it. So the last one I turned on was a quarter note delay, which I liked. I thought it was going to be too long. So let's take a look at the eighth note delay, and maybe we should make the eighth note delay a dotted eighth. That might give it a little more bounce. So, so let's try that. So, solo, it sounds good. Let's try it in context. Mm -hmm. 
So here's an interesting thing you can you can take away from me messing around with this for this long. For me, this is a long time to be in one section doing this. So I had acoustic piano, electric piano, I had a pad, then I had a strum guitar, and then I had the picking guitar. Keeping in mind, when you're doing something, your ear can only focus, or your brain can only focus on three things at a time in the mix, and we haven't even got the vocal in yet. I'm gonna leave this the way it is, and then I'm gonna move on and see if there's anything else in there. And if it took us that long to sort of discover the chorus, maybe anything else we find has to be shut off or severely EQ'd. Let's check it out. So you'll notice I switched this from EG bus three to two. So two is the same bus that this picking guitar is going through that has quite a bit of mid-range put in it. Now this one, I don't even know what this is, and there's a lot of guitars in here and I might not use it. So I'm just going to put it on a straight output, not going to any particular aux submaster, just to see what it is. Okay, we definitely don't need that. There's a lot of things going on. That probably was something that went on before the acoustic guitar went on. So hide it and make it inactive. Now you'll see me popping over here and I'm holding down control and clicking on this show me memory location. That's just my track visibility. So I'm updating it. So if by accident I go over here and pop on show all tracks, all I have to do is click this to get back where I was. So we have all the guitars in the chorus. So now let's go back and experiment with putting this in in number two or number three and see what we like better. And if we can keep it in one of them, we will to say processing. We'll just see how it goes. it's nice in there I'm just gonna check these solid because one of them has a bunch of stuff on it from the prior session and this one doesn't so this is the first one with the processing two without coming up I like the one without it I like the one with it, so it lends a different timbre. They were just doubled. So now we got those down. Let's go see what's going on with this tremolo guitar. I do have a bus for tremolo guitars. And most of the time I use them for like a, uh, you know, the classic tones, spring reverb, whatnot. So let's see what this is doing by itself. Probably was just deactivated, but I would think I'd want this to move around a little bit in the course of the session just to keep it out of the middle. So let's see what the pan man did.
So I think it would be nice to have some kind of bounce on it, more than that even. So we have spring reverb on it now, which sounded cool. It's different than everything else. Let's try that dotted eighth delay and see if that makes it too weird. So that's a good example of why you should try things. That, when it was turned up, I really didn't like it and I thought, let me shut it off, but then I turned it down and it, it kind of gave it a little bit of a bounce. So I'm gonna go for the quarter note delay and keep that one. Why do I have a delay for the guitars and a separate delay for the vocals? Because the guitar delays are feeding back into the guitar room reverb, whereas the vocal delays are feeding back into the vocal room or plate, whatever I'm gonna be using. Here's the quarter note with it. Another good trick if you're not sure, bypass it. Let's check our chorus one last time. So to recap what we did with our electric guitars in this first half of our electric guitars, we took a look at each part separately and tried to improve on the sound wherever we could, frequency-wise, compression, EQ, some had delays. Then we balanced them against each other and then balanced them against the track. Then we circled back and balanced them against our keyboards. So for instance, our chorus guitar was a brighter sound and our, electric, our acoustic piano, sorry, was brighter. So we worked with those two for a minute and then our darker sounding keyboards, which was our electric piano and pad, we worked with our picking guitar and our tremolo guitar. And we had them in little groups and then bigger groups and then against the whole track. So just remember, always working in solo is not helpful. You can go in solo mode to troubleshoot a little bit. Then you have to balance it against like instruments or like groups of instruments and eventually the whole track. So we hope that helped you out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks.